Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over our buys, sells, and dividends for April 14th through April 20th. Let's get it. So there's a few things that I'd like to mention on the channel first before we get started with the content. <clears throat> first thing is, um, we're I'm sure you guys know this, but we're still running a poll on X as to what time you guys would like the content to be released in the morning time in terms of market hours. Um, the poll is going to be for seven days. You guys are welcome to go vote on X. You can find the link to our X account on our channel. For those of you guys that don't care to do it, you don't have to. Uh, but if you think that your vote doesn't matter, it does because we're going to make our decision based on this. Uh, we're trying to find a time that is suitable for everyone or most people. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is we are from as of today, starting today going forward or yesterday, I should say, because by the time you guys see this, it'll be tomorrow morning. Um, we will start posting our videos at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that is 30 minutes before the market opens. Now, um, the next thing I'd like to mention before we get into the content is that we have activated the channel memberships. So what this will give you the ability to do is for, I would say, a relatively conservative cost. Again, we're in the finance space. So the amount of money it would cost on a per month basis to basically get early access to any of our videos pretty much anytime you want is, if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, is pretty much peanuts compared to the amount of money that you'll make in finance. So um, it's basic, basically it's on a per month basis. You guys can find out all the information on that. When you click on a video that we upload, it basically there's, you'll see a little join button. You can click on that and then that will give you the option to sign up for a membership or not. Uh, basically, I, th I believe you'll get like a, a cool looking emoji, a star, uh, some kind of like star symbol or something like that. And then you'll get early access to all of our content. So um, if you are signed up for a membership and let's say we're posting a video at five o'clock that night, but you want to see it at eight in the morning. Well, if you're a member, then you'll get to see it at eight, at eight in the morning. So uh, we've done this to try to make it possible for everybody to get what they want. So anyways, let's get into the content. So first thing we're going to go over here is the M1 finance account. As you guys can see, no trades on the week. Uh, we've been much more heavily focused on our Robinhood account and also cryptocurrency. As you guys know, the Bitcoin having was today, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. We'll get into that in the next one. So in terms of the dividends we received this uh, week from M1 finance, we got $5.77 from Leggett and Plaid, $0.45 cents plus, I believe, another kind of special dividend maybe from... Uh, horizon here. So a total of 70 or 66 cents and then one cent from PSEC. So again, not really much going on with this account. Uh, we're a little bit more heavily focused on crypto than dividends at this point in time, although we're still buying dividend paying stocks. So we're going to go over to the, uh, what is this called? The Fidelity account here. As you guys can see, we no longer have BCHG. Yes, that is true. We did actually sell for profit. We took all of the money on this position off the table. Um, reason being is, is not because it was dumping. That's not the reason why we did it. We had personal reasons that we're not going to talk about on this channel, but uh, we just decided that we were going to go ahead and take the money off the table and I mean, it wasn't such a huge amount of money invested to where we felt like we had to wait for it to rise up in price. Uh, with LTCN, this is a different story. We wouldn't be selling this at $36. Where If we were going to sell it, we'd wait for it to go back to 55 But uh, we're not going to sell it at 55 either. But with uh, something like BCHG, we just didn't really have a lot of money into it. So we decided that it wasn't a big deal if we cashed out early. So anyways, um, you can see the positions here. We still have all of our LTCN, still have some HN, still have some ETCG. Um, we do plan on adding to these two right here, still kind of waiting for HN to get a little bit lower, uh, so we can get more aggressive with our buys. ETCG, I would say at this point is probably perfect for us to start buying, um, as of Monday morning at market session open. But, um, we also have native crypto to, uh, think about and the miners as well. So anyways, that's our positions in grayscale. You guys can see we did indeed take profit here. So the total amount that we made in profit was $4,580.21. Uh, 
Uh, we sold on a little bit of a rebound. It wasn't a big rebound, but it was something. So basically just shy of 15 bucks. As you guys know, our average cost basis was $4. So we essentially made like, I think roughly around $11 a share or something like that times the 310 shares. So that's kind of where that number comes up from. But the total profit there is basically just shy of 4,600. So now we'll go over to Robinhood, take a look at some of those dividends. So I can tell you guys right now, uh, let me actually double check on this just to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. So the dividends that we received on this account would be, I believe, from QDTE and WiMAX. So QDTE has been getting kind of smashed. But again, if we go back over here to the charts, and I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible because that's we generally don't talk about this on, on these videos. Uh, we have posted some... Um, we have posted some things on X recently that you guys can check out that is related to kind of more of the ma macro markets and reversal points and stuff like that. But again, QDTE um, and anything index related has been dumping. Uh, that would probably go for your JEPIs and your SPYIs and all that stuff has been falling off a cliff, as you guys can see here, because the market has finally had this bearish move this year. Uh, we expected to bounce somewhere between 4,060 and 4,800, but that's uh, again for another video. So that's why QDTE has been dumping. So currently down a little bit. We only have one share, so it's not that much, you know, just a few bucks. But uh, we received 27 cents from them. So now we'll go back over to WiMAX. This is the one that we had been buying quite a bit more aggressively. So as you guys can see, WiMAX is getting absolutely pummeled. So unfortunately, that, that's because, um, again, the issues between Iraq and Iran, just so you guys know, those kind of geopolitical events are actually very profitable. Uh, I know it sounds bad because, you know, we don't want we, we want people to be at peace. Right. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of people that out there that don't because they want to make money. And it's kind of sad, but is the way it is. So um you know, since we're here, we might as well take advantage of it. So cost basis is 2140. Um, current price is 1936. So again, another good dip on opportunity here. But as you guys can see, we uh, made $42.24 in dividends from this. So the total dividends we received is 4895. And the total profit that we made between basically any swing trades, which the only one we had this week was BCHG, was $4,580.21. So, all right, with that being said, now let's get into the buys that we did for this week. So the buys that we did for this week was, uh, I believe, in TSLP, FEPI, and WiMAX, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to take a look at those. So you can see our share count is quite a bit higher on TSLP here. Again, their ex-dividend date is coming up on, uh, it looks like, the 24th of this week. So if you want to get into this one, you essentially have two more days to do so. So TSLP has had a massive drop. Um, if we take a look at the three-month chart, you guys can see this thing has been getting absolutely smashed. Uh, I do believe at some point in the near future, Tesla is going to have a rebound. I just say that simply because it's so over, oversold at this point that it it basically almost seems impossible that it's not going to rebound. And actually, you know what? Let's take a look at the Tesla chart. And this is not one that we talk about as much, not because we don't want to, but because, again, we're more heavily focused on crypto. As you guys can see on the RSI, we're getting pretty close to the oversold territory. Um, just to give you guys an example of what this looks like. So from the low, high to the low here, down about 63%. If I actually zoom out here, uh, let's see here. So yeah, basically from this swing high to swing low, um, I think I measured this wrong, swing high to swing low, about 52% down. But from the bull market top the last time to the bear market bottom, as you guys can see, the drop was a massive 73%. And again, we are kind of getting close to this trend line here. So you can see how close the price action is to this macro trend line. That's at about 140 bucks. Uh, last time we had the bear market bottom, it did bounce almost 
perfectly on that trend line as you guys can see there. And on the daily time frame, as you guys can see, we had an oversold signal here, but we're having another one here. But if you look closely at the RSI, very, very closely, you guys can see that from the time we had that oversold shade of red there, we have actually been moving up on the RSI, whereas we've been moving down on the price. This is what's known as bullish divergence. It's generally an early signal of a reversal. So in this case, we're expecting the price to go from being down to being up. And we also have earnings. So earnings is right around the corner too. That could also be a catalyst that could send the price of Tesla higher. And I can tell you, I can tell you guys right now, smart money has likely just been taking profit on their positions all the way down. And they probably intend to buy down again, somewhere down here. I mean, this is the way that smart money works. They generally like to kind of front run any potential move in the market. So if it seems like this is retail, it could be retail, but I can guarantee you or not. Oh, well, I can't guarantee you anything, but I can, uh, as close to a guarantee as possible. I can, I can guarantee you guys as this thing was going up and getting ready to potentially sell off smart money was selling on the way up here. So again, this reiterates what we always try to practice, sell into strength, buy into weakness. So anyways, back to the content. So we have 11 shares, 2133 is our cost basis. So it's uh, still quite a ways away above the market price. But you guys can see here that we bought uh, three shares each day over the last couple of days there. So now we're going to go into Feppy. As you guys can see, Feppy, I mean, the whole market is just getting smashed. Um, and I'm actually going to show you guys the futures chart here in a minute of what that catalyst looked like when, you know, Israel did eventually react to Iran. Iran kind of, you know, did their thing and was like, hey, we're done. But Israel wasn't satisfied, so they decided to retaliate. And then the market sold off like an absolute banshee. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. You can see the market price is pretty low compared to our cost basis, but we're still buying. So again, we bought quite a bit back here. As you guys can see, we'll do the show more. So yeah, those three days there, we basically bought like a little bit over a share each day, as you guys can see on that one. And here's YMAX. Of course, again, YMAX is down compared to our cost basis, but that's because the market's been selling off so aggressively. There's not really much we can do about that. It's like I said, it's kind of macro factors that are uh, beyond our control, unfortunately. So that is what it is. But um, as you guys can see here, we bought a handful of shares on both of these days here in advance of the in advance of the X date and the dividend date. So once again, we are basically doing the dividend capture strategy that we talked about on this channel. So before we get into the options premiums, let's actually take a look at the futures markets here. So I want to reiterate to you guys why this was such a big deal. And again, I know this is not something that we would normally cover on this channel, but um, it does kind of matter. So I'm going to go over here to the 15 minute chart. This is the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ futures, in case you guys are wondering. So let me see if I can actually find the time frame for this. So let's go back a little bit. Let's see, that's the morning. Okay, yeah, so this is the afternoon session. So this is when that news catalyst came out with the, uh, you know, Iran wanting, or Israel wanting to respond, respond to Iran. Again, the stock market was not open, when it, but when it, it did open, it kind of had like a pop-up and then it sold off. So as you guys can see here on the volume indicators, this is a big move, okay? So this move, basically from probably right around where we would have sold to the bottom here was nearly 400 points. That is a huge move on NASDAQ. We generally only aim for about 150 to 100 points. So this is like four to eight times that. And what's so important to note about this is this happened in the afternoon. If you guys look at the volume indicator here, you guys can see that there was 30, 28,000, 35,000, 55,000, 27,000, 24,000, you know, on and on massive, massive contracts being traded here. But if we look at the afternoon session of like, say, the previous day, 
you guys take a look at the volume indicator again once i'm up on the top left there wasn't really a whole lot going on so just a couple thousand contracts per hour and then again on this previous day here just a couple maybe two three thousand contracts traded in the afternoon and once again here you know you had a little bit more volume but again the price as you guys can see above wasn't really doing much of anything during this afternoon session so uh yeah that that session that we had way back here on see if i can find it again um yeah, this session that we had on Thursday was kind of a big deal. So that's pretty much what the start of the massive capitulation of the indices was. So anyways, um, let's get into the options premiums now. So options premiums in terms of what we made this week. Uh, so we have 24 times one on HUD 8. So basically $24, uh, $31 times one contract on Riot, $50 times one contract on HUD 8, uh, $14 times one contract uh, again on another uh, covered call of HUD 8 and $104 times one on one contract of Riot. So the $24, uh, that strike price is $11. The $31, the strike price is 12. The $50, the strike price again is 12, but this is for an expiration of 719. So the first two were 517. Third one is 719. Uh, the $14 is for a 1050 strike price, and that is for May 3rd. And then the $25 strike price, which is the $104 in premium, is for January 17th of next year. So you guys can see all those right here. So we got the 17 ones here, uh, the May 3rd here, July 19th here, and then the $25 riot call here. Um, and again, our average cost basis on riot is ten dollars and seventeen cents as our average cost basis the strike price is twenty five dollars so even though we only collected a hundred dollars in premium if this thing if riot hits twenty five dollars at any point before the expiration of this contract um or above twenty five dollars we basically you know are at risk of getting our shares called away which is what we want because again that would be fifteen dollars per share in profit. So times 100 would be $1,500 in profit, which again, we would happily accept. So that's kind of what's going on with the options premiums there. Now let's take a look at the native cryptocurrencies. Got to give us a second to load guys. So, okay, so here's the native cryptocurrencies. So as you guys can see, we still have all of our positions here. Nothing has really changed. We haven't sold out of anything. We uh, did, of course, make some rotations, but that's normal uh, when it comes to making money in the markets. It's Some people call it rebalancing when it comes to investing. Some people call it repositioning when it comes to trading. It's pretty much essentially all the same thing, just a different time frame. So you can see we have Filecoin, AIOZ, Bitcoin, Dash, Banker Network, um crypto.com that's an exchange token scale uh render that's another ai token horizon this is the underline for the hsn uh, grayscale trust the graph engine uh we have zcash here ethereum litecoin um we do have uh wrapped luna classic pretty sure we're never going to get our money back on that one but that is you know of course that's a risk in crypto 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 is very risky and um not all cryptocurrencies are going to go up in price. Some of them might go to zero. Just do understand that's a risk. So anyways, this is kind of what it looks like on the monthly time frame. Very volatile, as you guys can see. Um, if you guys cannot handle the volatility in crypto, there's always dividend paying stocks and options that you can get into. So as you guys can see, it kind of really went down, then went up. Um, so it went up after the Bitcoin halving, which was, again, I believe yesterday. And after that, as you guys can see, the price of cryptocurrencies are starting to rise. So if this continues and LTC and MBCHG, or I should say Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash are going up uh, for the remainder of this week, we could see a massive bounce on uh, the Grayscale Trust in that case. Um, in terms of what we're looking at for BCHG, so we sold out of it. I'm sure you guys are probably wondering about this. So we sold out of it uh, pretty much what we're looking for. And we may not even get this. And that's fine. If we don't, we'll just put the money into something else. 
We're kind of looking for it to come back down to this zone to seven to eight dollars. If we don't get that, then you know there's plenty of opportunity out there. We can go into options, we can go into dividend paying stocks, we can sit on cash and collect the interest. We can get back into some other grayscale trust or native cryptocurrency that could go up massively in value. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities out there. We're not too worried about whether this thing is going to drop down to our target price, but we do have some money on the side in case it does. So anyways, this is our buy, sells, and dividends for this week. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.